which, which one would you say is your main? Hello, everyone. Oh, hello. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, my name is Cap, and I am the protagonist of this story. <laughs> uh, this and, and I am uh, joined here by uh, a lovely couch. I'll have them briefly introduce themselves. Hey, I'm 360 Chrism. I'm Pi Pusher at 11. I'm Ash. Uh, and great. With, with that being said, uh, I'm really happy to, to get this run underway. And so um, we are going to begin the Rescue Olimar speed run. I am ready for the countdown. Does my couch want to do a countdown for me? All right, sure. starting in three, three two, two, one, one go. go! Let's get it. So, yeah, so the Rescue Olimar speedrun is a really awesome speedrun. Uh, Pi, do you want to just give a brief background on the story as we load in? Yeah, so as we begin here, um, Olimar has crash-landed on the Pikmin planet, PNF-404, <laughs> yet yeah, yeah. again. And uh, there's a brief intro section here where he's going to be finding his last ship part, the interstellar radio, and going to be um, broadcasting an SOS signal that's going to be picked up by the rescue corps. And yep, yeah. So right now, the Pikmin are pretty scattered around for reasons unbeknownst to Olimar. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be collecting a lot of the Pikmin that are scattered around and going to the boss fight. Uh, there's plenty of Pikmin scattered around. There's actually a hundred total, but we don't actually need all of them. We only need the Pikmin that we need to basically two-cycle the boss that will advance the tutorial section and allow us to actually begin the main story. So you'll notice that Olimar is riding on Pikmin Dog. Uh, this is Pikmin Dog Green, uh, <laughs> also known as Moss. Uh, she's, she's lovely, even though she looks like she's judging you at all times, uh, but she does love you. Um, we can use Moss to rush. We saw this to break down pots, but we can also do it to attack enemies and plant all of the Pikmin on the enemy to quickly do damage. If we do this properly and time the rushes, we should be two-cycling this boss, and we do. Nice. Excellent. Great. All right. Uh, by the way, um, there is an incentive for the suit color. Is it purple still? It is purple still. We love that. Woo -hoo! All right. Uh, we're we're going to be rocking purple. Uh, so the rescue corps, uh, Olimar sends out a signal to the rescue corps. The problem is the rescue corps also crash lands. Uh, you'll see this is a very common theme in this game. Uh, so we have to rescue the rescue corps. So that is going to be our first priority before we get to rescue Olimar. And here we meet our interpret hero. Purple suit, and I am the protagonist. And we can go. All right. Um, so yeah, so now we are in, inbound onto the Pikmin planet. I like that the game starts with yeah. basically no tutorial immediately, and <laughs> then they start the tutorial. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they make you think, oh, nice, no tutorial this game, and then, oh, damn. And we meet Ochi. We meet Ochi, yes, Pikmin dog. <laughs> we love you, Best Ochi. dog. Be best dog. Um, Ochi is basically like a Super Pikmin Captain hybrid. Uh, it's extremely broken, as he should be. And, uh, and we're first going to use him to carry this route. Uh, we're going to have to wait a little bit for him to do this task, so this would be a good time for maybe some initial donations. Uh, from the host, if they want to. Absolutely. Give me one second. I have a $25 donation from Please Fair Phoenix. It says, spawn more, spawn more, spawn more overlords. Again, referring to our Zerg campaign bonus mission. Thank you so much for your donation. I have $20 from Ali Mae that says, Pikmin! <laughs> Very that. exciting. Thank you so, so much. Amazing. Thank you so much. So we have actually just discovered our second Rescue Corps member, Colin. Now, Colin is really stanced up. Look at him hit that pose in the picture. Um, <laughs> however, we actually don't really like Colin. Colin is kind of known within the community <laughs> to be kind of the worst. Uh, we all hate Colin. Colin he's really Colin, annoying. Colin is just miserable, honestly, <laughs> as, as a human being. Uh, or, you know, from whatever planet he's from. Uh, so the big reason is because Pikmin 4, they really went for the realism. And so, unfortunately, they give everyone collision. And we don't really like that, because he actually will get in our way. We'll see that a little bit later. At any case, uh, we use Ochi to dig up a, dust, uh, a dirt mound, and we are inbound onto our first cave. Uh, this cave will allow us to uh, you know, explore a little bit more and access more areas, which we need to get to for our ship. Um, I'm actually going to turn really sharply to hit a cutscene prompt as soon as humanly possible. 
Uh, and there's a Captain Bernard that's being guarded by several scary tiny Bulbor Blarva. Uh, once the, they die, the cutscene will start, but I'm able to multitask breaking those pots to mul so that they're already broken by the time this cutscene ends. And we now have our fourth, well, I guess including me, so third uh, Rescue Corps officer, Shepard. Now you'll see, look, we can just walk forward. This is excellent. Um, I, we, this, that's all we needed to get from this cave, so we're going to slowly make our way out, and we will be off. Probably uh, got more time for another donation here. Yeah. That sounds boring. Okay. Well, um, donations aside, what we're going to be inbound is we're going to be inbound on some, uh, on the Rescue Shore ship, and we're then going to need to collect Sparklium. So what's going to happen is the ship is here, but it's currently, like, basically unoperable because we need fuel. And in this game, fuel is used by a unit called Sparklium. And it turns out that Sparklium is just kind of held in household objects. So first we discover this onion. Uh, this onion does not have any Sparklium in it, but it is going to allow us to use Pikmin. But look, look, look at him go. He's, he's good. good job, Ochi. He's doing, he's doing so great. Also, Colin, behave. Colin, come good on guy. now. <laughs> What's happening to the other guy? <laughs> Sh Shepard, no. <laughs> Poor Shepard. Uh, uh, he's so activating the cutscene right there early. Yeah. yeah. So I, I activate that cutscene early. Uh, this cutscene teleports us, and we are now, we now have Red Pikmin. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, so we are going to multitask some things. There's going to be something called seed manip. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. Basically, this first one pellet is going to ge generate seeds. And if the second one pellet goes under the onion while seeds are being generated, those seeds are generated early. And so all four seeds have come out before the second pellet actually gets sucked up into the onion. This is obviously a lot faster. Motion controls allow us to walk away from the Pikmin before we whistle them. This is where Colin can be very annoying. <laughs> Colin! <laughs> Actually, that wasn't too bad. So you see how some of the Pikmin are running against Colin and we're basically preventing them from being thrown? Uh, that can be very annoying. Are you, like, throwing them into him? Or? Well, or the, the Pikmin, when they try to run into your hand, will basically... Uh, yeah, instead, they get stuck. Yeah, yeah. They, they get stuck behind Colin, and that is why he, <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you doing? They don't pluck Pikmin, they just stand behind you menacingly. <laughs> Come on. You think they'd at least be of some help right now? Yeah. Um, well, that's the console I'll do my run on. Yeah, hey, <laughs> Game Boy. Some some of the, some of the treasures in this game look very familiar to everybody. Uh, you'll notice the nice routing here. We have just grown just enough Pikmin to gain the minimum number of carriers needed to carry this Game Boy back to the ship. Once we carry this Game Boy back to the ship, the main tutorial section will be over. You see how I was throwing very slowly there? That's because these people don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Why are you like? Look, look, look. Let me try to run against them. Right? They're just, they're very sticky, sticky individuals. There's day one. All right, we've now successfully repaired the first part of the SS Shepherd. Um, then this concludes the tutorial section. Congratulations, everyone. We have 11 Pikmin to our name, which is pretty good. Uh, you, you could grow more, but of course, we're going to be trying to go very, very, very fast. And so... Um, well, you can. You, how yeah. many can you get on day day one? Not uh, you, many. You, I think yeah, it's only thirteen, right? 13? Yeah, you, you, you can get thirteen. We actually skip a one pellet for funsies, uh, mo well, more for speed than for funsies, but you know. Uh, so now we also have our mission to rescue Olimar. It's going to turn out that we're going to have to rescue the entirety of the rescue corps before we can rescue Olimar. So it's still going to be a, a main priority. Um, so I think at this point, it might be prudent to start talking about the different kind of collectibles we're going to get in this game. Um, you know, maybe Ash can help uh, give a little bit more detail. So there's going to be treasures and, and castaways. Ash, do you want to kind of like yeah, give a little more? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, scattered throughout all of this game, there are tons of caves. Like, we saw the first cave. They made a huge deal about this, like caves returning from Pikmin 2. Uh, within those caves are, oh, and above ground too, there are treasures. But in those caves, there are treasures and there are castaways. And in some of them, there are also onions and farlock. The treasures will give you sparklium, which we need to increase the ship's radar to unlock new areas, um, which is going to be pivotal. And uh, castaways are just as pivotal, if not more, because that is how we're going to rescue the rescue corps. That's uh, correct. Yes, thank you. And also, you'll see we just picked up a very interesting thing called materials. Chris, do you want to just uh, explain how materials work for a little bit? 
Yeah, materials are just scattered around the world and you can use them to build bridges. And then also later in the hub, you can actually buy items with them like bombs and... Uh, yeah. Well, I think we're only buying bombs. Yeah, you, you can buy upgrades, but you can also buy mostly like items that are very powerful. Yeah, You'll upgrades see, like yeah. fire resistance and uh, no, new skills. Wait, no, not the new skills for Ochi. Yeah. Well, no, no. I, yeah. Sorry, that's Pup Drive, which you get from Castaways. Ah, Pup Drive. Pup Drive. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll see that Ochi is very strong. You'll see that we actually burst down that gate to get to this cave, Last Frost Cavern, um, with basically two Ochi bursts. So this is very good. Up here, we're actually going to get some nectar from pots. Nectar is very important because it makes Pikmin leaves turn into Pikmin flowers, which will make them run faster. Uh, so we're going to get some nectar here, and we're going to use this nectar to make our Pikmin happy. Now, as we all know, speed is good. Speed is good. Yeah, when they're flowered, they're running faster and they're carrying stuff faster. Uh, but damage-wise, I don't think there's a difference. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no difference damage-wise. Well, one of those Pikmin was entrepreneurial and carried something back without my permission. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's what... That, <laughs> we love that, honestly. Thank you. We, we love... Uh, you know, that's, that's proactivity. Honestly, good for him. Yeah, good, good for him, indeed. So Ice Pikmin is a new Pikmin type that we've generated, which is lovely. Uh, Ice Pikmin are very powerful. Oh, wow, well, I, just, I guess we're just not killing that. Um, so Ice Pikmin are very good in this game because they can freeze enemies, as you can see. This not only makes e enemies easier to kill, but it, they also give us nectar, which we're using to, uh, you know, fl flower even more of our Pikmin. There, there was one of these shear grubs that which hurt Pikmin on the ground, but uh, I'm actually pretty sure that they just won't kill anyone. Like this is this guy's just chilling, and so I'm just gonna let him chill. <laughs> they're really annoying in one. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty annoying. But in this game, you know, Pikmin is all about being efficient and and also being kind of passive. Like if an enemy isn't in our way, uh, we generally go by the philosophy of like I'm just not gonna bother you. If you're not in my way, I am not gonna touch you. So we speed this up, and in Pikmin, uh, generally, you know that you've done something right if all the treasures are getting in at the same time. Pikmin is ultimately a multitasking game, and so your ability to uh, get time everything and collect everything in a, in a coordinated, efficient manner is ultimately what drives the speedrun. This is true for not just Pikmin 4, but the entire Pikmin franchise. Yeah, you always mm -hmm. want to get the slowest thing moving first, and then get, try to get everything else done by the time it gets carried back to the, and, the and, base. And you know when it's like a core aspect of the game when they even decided to give it a name of right. uh, Dandori. 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 <laughs> More on Dandori later. Do not worry. There will be Dandori. Um, Dandori. So uh, we also just got a Flarlick. Uh, Pai, do you want to explain how Flarlick works super quick for yeah, the, so, uh, the audience? Uh, in previous Pikmin games, you started with the ability to take out 100 Pikmin on the field at once. Uh, in this game, you can only take out 20, but for every one of these Flarlick that we collect, we can now take out more Pikmin at once. So now we've... Instead we can of 20, take up, now we can have up to 30 out in the field. Right, yeah. New to Pikmin 4, uh, before in other places you had static bases around the areas. In Pikmin 4, you can move bases. So we're actually going to un unlock a base to use later. We're actually now going to engage in our first little sequence break. Normally you have to go all the way around, but it turns out when you dismiss Pikmin against a wall, they can basically knock down this bag, which is a shortcut early. So there we go. And this will allow us actually to, to enter one of the caves that we want from the, I guess, back, proverbially. You know, it's basically the opposite direction from when we were supposed to unlock this area. And so this allows us to access our second cave very efficiently. So this is Crackling Cauldron. So let's get in here. Um, so Crackling Cauldron is where we're going to get our third Pikmin type. We were introducing a lot of Pikmin types very quickly. So we've gotten reds, we've gotten ices, and now in this cave we're actually going to get yellows. Um, in our last cave, we actually got a castaway. You might have noticed it was a Rescue Corps officer. That's Rust. That's going to be what allows us to get upgrades, and also Ochi will get an upgrade here. So I kill this guy. One, two, three, four, five. Get this guy. So note that I used an Ice Pikmin to freeze that Shear Grub. This is actually very important because I still have leaves, and leaves are slow and leaves are bad. So we're going to actually freeze that guy on purpose to get nectar to actually make sure that all of my Pikmin are moving as fast as possible. We're going to get these yellows for free. We love that. We love free things. Um, we're going to lower this bag because we need to, get this guy, and then we're going to... Yellow Pikmin, one of their abilities is that you can launch them very high. So they were able to knock down that eraser. And then switching to the flowered Pikmin so they carry it faster. Exactly. 
It's all planned. Uh, another ability of yellows is they are actually resistant to electricity, which allows them to knock down this electric gate very efficiently. Ochi, we're going to give him a job. You always, <laughs> <laughs> so help, help me with that eraser, man. Um, so we're going to nectar our yellows. Uh, as, as you'll see, keeping, keeping Pikmin flowered is just a very important strategy in general. So we're going to nectar and we're going to move from here. Um, this next segment is uh, very, very, very tricky, so I'm going to try to focus a little bit. There's going to be a lot going on. We have to collect materials, we have to get a castaway, and we have to multitask some, uh, some gates and other stuff. So we're going to multitask that hazard. And then there's also 20 materials. We're going to use a lot of materials in this game, so we have to get moving. We're going to prevent this guy from causing a problem. We're going to never stop moving. If you can avoid stopping movement, you want to basically keep walking as fast as possible. We're going to multitask this gate as we run to the castaway, so that's always fun, running and throwing. We're going to get these hazards out of the way, and we're going to pluck these yellows while we bust the gate. That castaway is on a ledge that's a little bit too high for us to get with normal Pikmin, but yellows you throw higher, so you can actually get them with yellows specifically. And look at this timing, and we're done. Excellent. Love that. Uh, all right. Pikmin liked hitting walls, which is fine. That happens to the best of us. Uh, there's, now we have to quickly multitask this fire hazard. Uh, so this game sometimes has auto lock on, which is sometimes a blessing and a curse. The blessing is you don't have to think about locking on. The curse is that it will automatically do it for you, which means sometimes it does it when you don't want it to. But you know, sometimes a lot about understanding how to do, run a game quickly is understanding uh, how to get the game to not do things that you want to do. So this castaway that we're going to get here is actually not a member of the Rescue Corps. He is Schnauz, uh, who's a treasure reclaimer, which gets uh, a, a, tre a treasure appraiser, which uh, brings us to the idea that the castaways that you unlock are unlocked in order. There's a reason why you can't see what kind of castaway you get before you actually collect them, because um, castaways are not limited to like specific caves. It matters what order you collect them. So. Uh, you have to get a certain number of castaways in order pro to progress the story. The caves that you actually explore don't matter as much, except for the number of castaways in them. At any case, right now, Ochi is a very tiny dog. We love him, but he's tiny. <laughs> uh, this, unfortunately, no longer helps us. Uh, but the good news is, after you collect Russ, which was the first castaway, if you end the day, Ochi gets a very, very, very reasonable size upgrade. So we are going to end the day, because that is all we can do today and we will watch Ochi get big tomorrow. Uh, now is a very good time for donations. Absolutely. I have a $25 donation from Formal, Repeat Dandori, for good practice. I've been looking forward Dandori. to this Pikmin run as it's a game super close to my childhood. Best of luck to Cap and the crew. Donations go to an incentive of runner's choice. Thank you so much for your donation. Thank you so much, Dandori. Um, there's a lot of really interesting stuff that's about to happen. So in a little bit more of like an upgraded element, we now have a cutscene that says, Ochi's huge, which is great. It's going to happen in a moment. Ochi's huge, look at that. <laughs> um, so so it, this now gives us the ability to upgrade Ochi. Um, so Shepard, yeah? No, it's good. It's important. <laughs> it's important. He's big. Remember, when in doubt, Pikmin dog. Uh, so basically, uh, Shepard, if you talk to Shepard, you, uh, in many, many more words than uh, she needs to explain, you can basically buff Ochi by increasing its capabilities. We are going to basically be spending all of our pup drive, which you get from rescuing people, to making sure that Ochi can carry whatever the heck we want. So now, before Ochi could only carry things that were a weight of three, now Ochi can carry things that are a weight of 20 which is going to be very, very important for routing purposes later, but also just makes Ochi useful at large. Colin is going to tell us that we have items and we don't care, and then we're going to go to Russ. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Colin. We hate Colin. I mean, like, come on. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, we, so Russ gives us um, items and upgrades. The only upgrade that we really care about is the charging horn. You are going to see the charging horn in action very, very soon. Do not worry. Basically, instead of throwing Pikmin one by one, you can just tell Pikmin, I want you to go and, and do this you know, activity for me. It's the best so. thing Pikmin 3 introduced. Yeah, sure. It was Charging horn is so good. Right. Good for Gandori. <laughs> Very good for Nidor. Yeah, no, Chris is right. So it was, it was introduced in Pikmin 3. It luckily makes a, uh, a reprise here. So the important thing, why is Ochi being so huge important? There are two main things we have to keep in mind. For one, you can ride Ochi. This is very important for my mental health. Uh, two, <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, two, 
um, uh, you can jump, which, while less important for my mental health, is very important for accessing other areas in the game. Uh, so we're going to go over here, and now we can access this cave, which we could not access earlier. Um, we're going to change our numbers a little bit to make sure that we are kosher on being able to carry stuff, and we have entered Hectic Hollows. So coming up here, we are going to get a lot of Ice Pikmin. We need 30 Ice Pikmin for reasons that I will explain very, very soon, but not quite yet, uh, because there's a lot going on. And right in this cave, we're going to introduce the concept of what we use materials for. So here we have a climbing wall. This climbing wall is not built. Luckily, we can build it with materials. Nice, that was really good. Okay, I was able to get off of Ochi before the cutscene plays, which allows me to switch to Ochi. Um, oh no. Ah, uh, ran off. Yeah, no, o Ochi, Ochi was unfortunately uh, too eager, and oh uh, no, sir. And basically, uh, he decided to knock <laughs> the, the captain off the ledge, which is fine, it happens. You know, it's, it's the effort that counts. Um, also, uh, I pulled up a little menu. Uh, Pi, do you want to explain shortcuts to, to the group? So basically, you can map certain actions to the D-pad, which will let you um, yeah, use them quicker. Yeah. Uh, right. You mapped uh, switching captain, so you can switch between the captain and Ochi very quickly with a single press of a button. Right. So there, basically, the, the, the two commands that I want to map right now mostly are dismiss, which... Um, which is basically like, you know, I, I don't want any Pikmin with me, and switch. So if I want to move flawlessly from Ochi to the captain, I can now do that without too much effort. So what you're seeing right there is the charging horn. So you see how I do not have to throw all of those Pikmin, and instead I can just send a whole bunch of Pikmin en masse to various targets. Uh, this is the charging horn. So as you can see, it is very fast, because instead of having to throw individually all of these Pikmin, uh, I'm able to basically move through the levels a lot quicker and have them approach objectives a lot more cleanly. Um, you'll notice that you only need the treasures to be under the ship being collected in that animation to move forward. They actually will count as being collected. So As soon as they start wiggling. Yeah, exactly. So here, there is an enemy that you're going to freeze. Uh, we're just going to headbutt it, and it's gone, which is excellent. Uh, normally, you have to get up here. We can actually use yellow throws to kind of cheat and get this treasure down early. We knock down one of our favorite castaways. Uh, someone whose name I forget, because, you know, that's how much I, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> that's how important they are, everyone. Uh, no, but it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of castaways in this game. Um, so we, we, we get this one, we get a couple more materials, some ice didn't get uh, nectared, which is also cool and Kingsley? fun. Yeah, yeah, Kingsley, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, you see? We, we love that trivia. Um, we get this treasure. And we're, and we're out. Okay, so now we have 30 ice. This is very important because, as you see, another thing that was shown off in sub-level 1 is that ice can actually freeze lakes. Uh, frozen lakes are kind of nice because you can walk on them, which is something that you normally can't do on unfrozen lakes. Uh, we're going to need 30 ice to freeze um, a large enough lake to get the blue onions because we need blue Pikmin later in this game. Um, this is going to be a lot more uh, apparent uh, coming up. Uh, does, you know, Chris, do you want to talk about what spicy sprays are and what they do? Because that's going to become very relevant in a very uh, little bit. Yeah, so some, some enemies and some fruit that you collect can generate spicy spray. And when you use it, Pikmin immediately get flowered if they're not already. And they start working a lot faster and they're also starting attacking mm -hmm. uh, faster. But also, one downside is I think they start dying faster to every hazard. Yeah, so they, all, they, they die slightly faster because their animations are doubled. Hopefully, we don't have any of that downside. And, but ideally, we can basically collect... <laughs> Sorry. So, no, 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 you're all good. No, you're all good. No, but basically, we can collect the upside. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, as Ash pointed out before, in Rescue Olimar, we really care about collecting treasures and castaways. And treasures allow us to unlock new areas, and castaways allow us to progress the story. So really, there is this nice push and pull between the different objectives that this game wants you to complete. Luckily, we've routed out the specific amount of treasures that we need to progress to the area. So unfortunately, this area, while very cool and has a whole bunch of conveyor belts, doesn't actually have any treasures that we need to collect in this very finely tuned route that we've created. So we are actually going to use Ochi's headbutting magic to uh, actually just completely skip this area. Coming up, there are going to be honey wisps. Honey wisps are little things that are carrying eggs that will have nectar. Interestingly, they actually are a 50-50 between a nectar oh, and a spicy 50 /50? spray. Yeah, it's 50-50 for honey wisps specifically. It's 5% for eggs. It feels like 90-10, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, feels, it feels very specific. We are going to actually um, do a marathon strat where we're going to get three honey wisps because we need as many spices as possible. 
So we're going to you know, speed that up. Because Ochi needs to be at base, because there's a guy at base. We're going to throw nine yellows here. And we're going to check this guy. Please, please, please. Yes. OK, we're it, in. Man. There's one. We want to count him up. All right, look. O Ochi's here. We check this. Bonjour. Nope, it's OK. We, 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 you can't win them all. And that's why we check three. Uh, one is already very, 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 very good. Um, so we're going to get a little cutscene where I go shloop shloop. Shloop shloop. Uh, and, then, and I love that. Uh, and then, we, then we're basically going to multitask. And then there's a castaway up here. Now look, when I move base, Ochi comes with me. Uh, isn't that fun? So we basically, normally you're supposed to solve a whole puzzle to get Ochi over here, and instead we just use the powers of teleportation magic. But only if he stands in the other base, he will right. get teleported. Basically when you move a base, everything, oh man, it's being really mean, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to get our one of our most important Rescue Corps officers here. This is Dingo. We love Dingo. 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 We love Dingo. Um, Dingo knows no fear. Uh, he is the Tom Cruise of the Rescue Corps. He can do <laughs> anything. Um, there is nothing that I fear, but I fear the wrath of Dingo. Uh, basically, Dingo can beat any level if you're not trying hard enough at it. Uh, so it turns out that this is very good because a lot of levels um, that you'll see later, like a lot of battles, are auto-scrollers. And although auto-scroller and auto-scrollers in battles are very fun for casual play, uh, speedrunners don't really like them. Um, so Dingo will allow us to skip a lot of auto-scrollers. Um, unfortunately, in order to actually use the magic of Dingo, you have to end the day, because we've rescued him. So we have to actually tell Dingo that he is, in fact, rescued. <laughs> so we're going to move... <laughs> so, <laughs> we, so we are going to move... Uh, so we're going to move the base. Uh, we're going to drown Ochi. Uh, we're going to explain why we drown Ochi in a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he's OK. He's OK. Don't it's worry. Important. It's important. <laughs> he's, he's okay. He's okay. It's actually important. <laughs> it's incredibly important. And he's OK. All right, Ash, do yeah, you want to explain why we did that? <laughs> but, but, OK, OK, so... The reason we drown Ochi, I promise, this is incredibly important. We need to drown Ochi so he can learn how to swim. <laughs> and <laughs> there is no better way to learn how to swim than to try <laughs> and fail. Sometimes it takes a few tries, but uh, it turns out, like I think it's two days after you first attempt Try, attempt to have Ochi swim, then yes. he actually learns how to swim, yeah. and then he can actually swim. Yes. And we can swim in the water with him, and he'll be a very good boy, and it'll be very important. <laughs> Correct. Uh, yes, that's very well said. So yeah, we need Ochi to swim later, which means you have to drown him now. If there was a way to not do that, I would not, I wouldn't, but you know, sometimes being a teacher is hard, and being a parent is even harder. So... Uh, <laughs> So uh, while, we load, while we load into the area, this would be a great spot for donations because a very important skip is coming up, and I want to make sure I have ample time to explain it. So donations would be good right now. Absolutely. I have a $50 donation from Nico that says, I love watching people play Pikmin almost as much as I love playing Pikmin. They're my favorite games, and getting a brand new one this year was a real gift. Good luck, Cap. I'm sure you'll crush it. No Cap. Thank you for your donation. I have a $250 donation from Captain X24 that just hey. says... Hey. 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 I know who that is. Sorry, go keep going. <laughs> we know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a $100 donation from Relish Police. Loved everything about Pikmin 4 and excited to see the run. I'm too old to stay awake, so I'll catch the rest run on the VODs. Good luck, Cap. Thank you very much. Coming up, there's gonna, we're going to collect a lot more treasures, do a lot more fun things, but mostly we're going to do a little bit more out-of-bounds stuff. So, very interesting. A lot of things in this, in this world have collision, which we're going to actually use to our advantage. Uh, throughout, the uni throughout this universe, there's a lot of unfinished bridges. Uh, it turns out that even though the bridges are unfinished, you can actually walk on them, including walking on the railings. Uh, this is going to be very good because you can use uh, moving around the railings to access places that you couldn't access before. There, by the way, just pausing to say that just you know, to show off that you can basically use one rush to knock down a bridge, sorry, knock down a wall, and also knock off that uh, that that clock. So there's some multitasking there. Here's our first little um, slight out of bounds. That's very easy. Uh, here's an one unfinished of, bridge. One of the bridge skips. Yep. Uh, oops. Whoops. So yeah, he, he jumps all the way to the right there <laughs> instead of for, uh, forward because there's an invisible wall. Yeah. So look that. So there, we can't. We we need to go around the invisible wall, but look, we get her basically around this gate for free. Um, so and. Interestingly, look, Ochi, we made Ochi really big and strong. Some of you might remember that. And look, Ochi is just so big and strong, pushing down this bag by himself. We love that for him. Um, we're going to multitask some stuff. We're switching. So here is one of the hardest tricks in the game. I have to basically weasel around a whole bunch of invisible walls. And if I do it right, it will look like there are no invisible walls, because I won't hit any of them. <laughs> Hold on. Good luck. Yep. 
I'm just the best. Well, you didn't do it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, <laughs> wait. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, yes. Nice, uh, first try. Yeah, first try. Uh, that is actually... Uh, I want to say it's harder than it looks. Uh, that was actually pretty... I mean, I hope it is. Does that the, that was hard. It is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> looks that's the hardest real. trick in the run. Okay, woof, woof. okay. so now that, now that that's done, we get to show off how awesome Dingo is. So this is Olimar. He looks a little strange. Uh, that's okay. Um, Are you sure that's Olimar? Yeah. Oh, sorry. It, it, sorry, it's very unclear whether or not that's Olimar. <laughs> uh, so we say end the Dandori battle, and Olimar's like, what? And then we're like, no, we need help. And then Dingo comes in and is like, oh... You need help. And then Dingo wins. Uh, yeah, we just saved five minutes. <laughs> uh, so that fight takes five minutes. It's a timer, so it is an auto-scroller. So Dingo just saved us a five-minute auto-scroller. We love you, Dingo. Uh, Mission Impossible 1 right there. Don't worry, there's a couple more. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a couple more. Ah, first mistake, it's okay. Uh, it turns out that I need different Pikmin numbers. Ah, uh, yeah, you need the... Yeah, it's fine. The yellow. It, 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 oh, the blues. no. It's good. The, the cool thing is, you see that rewind capability? It makes mistakes hurt a lot less. I wish I knew that. <laughs> 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 I've lost so many runs to just forgetting to switch Pikmin. Yeah. Then. So um, you'll see, so there is a blue onion that we're just digging up. A cutscene's going to play a little bit. Oh, look, a blue onion. Um, so basically, so that blue onion is going to be used because currently, even though you can get many Pikmin types in caves, if you don't have the onion, you can't actually grow the types yourself organically. Um, so we're going to basically use that blue onion because we're going to need to grow a lot of blues. There's going to be a cutscene because they're going to get confused. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Don't worry. Um, so if they get stuck, there's a little cutscene. Oh, no, you don't. Sorry, that was kind of risky. Uh, so basically, oh, we got a castaway. Uh, we don't know who this is because it's what's called a leafling. Uh, more on leaflings very soon. Um, Ochi's not going to like this. I'm sorry. Yeah, get out of the water, Ochi. It's okay. Ah, there we go. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, but now we've frozen the lake with our exactly 30 Pikmin routed in. Uh, Ochi is very big and strong, so Ochi can carry this all by himself because he's big and strong. And then we're going to help him out before this ice breaks. Don't jinx it. There it goes. Excellent. And now we have the blue onion. Blue Pikmin inbound. Um... Has an enemy ever attacked the, the 30 Pikmin carrying the blue onion for you? Uh, you, you <laughs> yes, uh, that and, that's, and, and that's very annoying because usually <laughs> it's a reset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, luck, uh, uh, usually, if you're very, very, very careful, you get no such luck here. Um, oh, it's, it's past that point yeah, now. Yeah, can't, can't yeah. Anymore. yeah, for sure. And so now that we've grown all of our blues and we've uh, rescued our leafling castaway from the clutches of Dandorimar, uh, we can uh, we can end the day and move on to the next area, Blossoming Arcadia. I will allow donations, but first there is a text box skip that I'm going to try to get right here. Uh, I actually collected a series of treasures, um, and if I advance the treasure list on the same frame that the window pops up, I skipped the text, and I just did. Nice. Okay. Woo! As, I didn't know that either. Yeah, nope, as, as usual, so normally if you get a series of treasures, they're like, wow, you unlocked a series. What does that mean? We don't know. And then basically we just skip an entire dialogue tree. As usual in speedrunning, sometimes when you skip something, uh, you know you're successful when you don't see anything at all. In any case, we're now done with Sun Speckled Terrace, and we can move on to Blossoming Arcadia. So um, basically a large part of the story progression is beating these Dandori battles with Dingo. Uh, but we're trying to beat these Dandori battles with Dingo, and in the first sub-level, they want you to really, or in the first area, they really want you to grind through the, through the area a lot to get to these, so you'll see that that um, Dandori battle was very, basically in the back of the area. Um, in these other areas, they're a little bit nicer, and they have these necessary Dandori battles. Again, we're doing this because we have to. Um, we're getting these necessary Dandori battles, um, uh, really, really early. So actually, this is the first thing that we do in this level. Uh, we're going to rush into a cutscene because you run faster when you're rushing and you have to stop anyway when the cutscene trigger hits. So you rush into that for some slight speed and we're already into this next very scary battle in a box. You are in a box and you're going to battle it. At least that oh, is... I think Dingo's going to battle it, actually. Right, exactly. Now, normally, look, Moss, very intimidating, has that look in her eyes. Luckily... Um, we use the power of Dingo to solve... Through the power of Dingo, all things are possible. Okay. Um, get help. Dingo, help. Dingo, please. All right, rookie. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? 
That's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Mission Impossible 2. Done. Uh, so now that we've so now that we've done that, um, we're actually going to do another bridge. We're going to do another bridge jump, and I'll explain a little bit more about exactly how the invisible walls work for bridges. And we need to go a grow a couple more blues. First, Colin is saying that you can only take out three Pikmin at a time. This is a new thing in Pikmin 4 uh, that you don't. You can't. You can only take out up to three Pikmin types, which is very interesting for routing purposes. Um, here we're going to throw exactly 17 Pikmin onto this bridge so they, they can build it up a little bit. We're going to leave Ochi there. Um, and then we're going to basically grow, you know, start collecting some more uh, growth items for blues. So for bridges, the invisible wall for unfinished bridges extends to the next completed row of, uh, of bridge pieces. So even if you don't complete a bridge, you can basically... Uh, extend the invisible wall if you half build it, basically. So that's what we're doing. We're in the business of half building. Um, so we're gonna, while this is all happening, of course, again, everything is multitasked. Nothing is wasted time. So of course, we do need to collect this, uh, this leafling castaway. We're gonna grow these blues, which is, which is being moved. And we need to wait for this last completed column of bridge before we can do another handy dandy bridge jump. Ah, it oh, happens. No. no, it happens to the best of us. It's all good. This bridge jump is thankfully much less uh, stressful than the other bridge jumps. See, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, there we go. Just a little bit. Uh, sometimes Ochi just likes to eat jumps. Any case, so now we're gonna enter Drafty Gallery. We're gonna we need we want Ice Pikmin mostly because we want to ensure that we can freeze some enemies to get more nectar and more spray chance. Drafty Gallery is honestly a really fun level. There's a lot of really fun games we play with spawns um, and, 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 and other things, basically, that revolve around use of Pikmin numbers. Uh, the first thing we want to do is turn around, um, throw behind us, because there's actually a treasure there. So risky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then we collect this. This is a very short sub-level, basically. Uh, we, we go here. Very okay. similar to one of the ones in Pikmin 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the assets that are used here is... Um, are like sort of remastered assets from, yeah. the, from the Pikmin 2 sub-level, so it's kind of really fun to see them bring it back and kind of reinvent them in their own way. Uh, the sub-levels are very fun because, of course, there's a lot of things to collect, and it's really fun to see like the optimal way of collecting all of them. Mm -hmm. In Pikmin 4, there's a mechanic where you throw leaves first. This is, frankly, sometimes a little bit annoying because you don't want to throw leaves, but here you can plan things out. Like, for example, I'm throwing leaves onto this gold pile specifically because I don't want to throw leaves onto this very far marble that I want to get moving, because this is going to take forever to get moving. Um, with reds, because they resist fire, we actually don't care about the fire hazard or the fire enemies. The red Pikmin are just going to keep marching, because they are my strongest soldiers. I'm going to break these eggs because I want spray chances, because the more sprays you get, the, uh, the more lucky you are. So, um, so I'm going to get this moving, I'm going to get this moving, and then hopefully... Thank you. Uh, this is not going to pose a problem, and we can continue to... Okay, hello. Sometimes Pikmin decide that they don't actually want to help you carry things. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's, that's kind of against the rules, dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it looks like we did not get a spray there, which is fine. Um, so once the last... So everything comes in at the same time here, right? So that is, again, another signature of a sub-level well-played. Coming up, there's going to be... Yeah, thank you. Um... <laughs> Coming up, there's going to be some really interesting stuff with, uh, based on the mechanics of how material use works. So uh, we're going to send our Ice Pikmin using charge to build this bridge um, because we want exactly 10 on it. And they're going to go back to the, basically back to the ship to get the material pieces to build the bridge, if you see that. So we don't want to move the base yet because they're going to the base to build the bridge. And if we move this base too early, that's unfortunate. Uh, so we don't want that. So we're going to actually chill for a little bit. Are you? Are you serious? <laughs> okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. We're, do, we're doing great. We're doing great. We're doing. We're doing amazing. Um, so while that's happening, you want to basically solve a puzzle to do this. And instead, I say, what if we just throw Pikmin up here, which is the best way of solving all problems. Um, so that's a little. So that's. I mean, sort of. It's hard to call it a sequence break, but definitely a developer unintended way of basically acquiring these treasures. Um, so I'm going to wait, tactically. There it is. Yep. So I'm going to wait a little bit to uh, move the base, and hopefully the clay bridge is completed, and it is, which will allow us to exit right as this treasure gets in. So there we go. Good timing. Yeah, very good timing. 
Um, so definitely you can kind of play around with the different spawns, and it's, it's very satisfying uh, in that regard. Um, so we are going to freeze this puffy blowhog here. Uh, he's facing us, which is somewhat annoying, but tractable. Oh, no, he's facing away. Good. Excellent. Uh, so this is why ice Pikmin are the best Pikmin in the game. Oh, no, it's an enemy. And now it's an icicle. And now it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with that, we can access this nice treasure and, of course, this nice cast. Oh, they're bit oh wow! They, they just the Pikmin were honestly very entrepreneurial there. They were already carrying stuff. Sometimes, sometimes they do that, which I appreciate. Uh, I'm actually exiting as Ochi on purpose. If you exit as Ochi, uh, the captain will automatically ride Ochi at the beginning of the level, which is just some menuing time save because you can buffer stuff. Uh, with Dalmo, who is a very cute character, if you ever talk to him casually, very cute NPC. Uh, we have now completed our Drafty Gallery. We actually intentionally missed a treasure because it saves time too. Uh, and then you don't get a cave complete, which, mm. while unsatisfying, actually does save time because you don't have that like save complete prompt. Um, so Chris actually earlier brought up a very interesting property of Spices, which is that it flowers your Pikmin. This is very convenient because we've just spent the last, I don't know, 15 minutes growing a lot of blues. Like, a lot of blues. Um, and... They're all leaves, so this is kind of sad. Uh, luckily, uh, now it's happy. So, <laughs> uh, so, just another, so now they're all flowers. Uh, oh, again, they, I just mentioned that um, yeah. Ochi can swim now. Oh, yeah. By the way, you see how Ochi can <laughs> swim? And instead of complaining, is, is, doing, is doing a great job. This it's, is because... That, that's how our training worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, is, this is because, unfortunately, we know the power of, of harsh parenting. Uh, coming up is... <laughs> <laughs> Don't quote me on that, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, so now once, once this comes in, we can move the base uh, because we're going to need that later, and then we can enter a sightless passage. Uh, so sightless passage, as the name implies, uh, is very hard to see. So it's asking, do we want a headlamp? And we say no because we can't buy one. <laughs> uh, so it's very dark. Uh, thankfully, um, we know where everything is. Uh, we do have the power of prescience. Uh, and so we are just going to basically fumble around in the dark and hopefully still collect all of the treasures we need to collect. This, this is basically like going through Rock Tunnel without using Flash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Same Very difficulty. Good. Very good. Yeah. Um, so first we're going to throw some reds on this. Reds are immune to fire, which is very important. Are they carrying it? Yes, they are. Um, so now with this being moved, we're going to move over here again. You can't see it. Don't worry. I can't see either. Uh, we're we're going to throw this onto this fire hazard because it's going to be a problem later. Throw that onto that Game Boy game, which is fun. Look, you see? It's a fun little Game Boy game. Unfortunately, we can't look at Pikmin carry treasures too much because we have things to do, um, people to see. Uh, there's actually a hidden treasure below these, um, below these fire hazards, so we have to get rid of them. Not only are they blocking our way, but there's a hidden treasure that's buried underground that we're going to use yellows, which uh, dig four times the strength of any other Pikmin to grab them. Four times. Yep, four times. Very weird. And how, how much stronger are reds compared to other Pikmin? Or is that not a thing anymore? Uh, not a thing anymore, actually. They basically, they be, for, okay. for digging specifically, it's a little bit nuked. Normally, you can use a spicy to burst through this gate. Unfortunately, we only got one. It happens. But uh, we can knock down this castaway while we're waiting for the wall to break. And then we can kill... It's called a shock cake. It's a great name. Um, so, But basically, we can throw a whole bunch of Pikmin onto this, hopefully very quickly. Oh, are they going to crush? Yeah, it was a weird kind of timing for things. That's okay. Nope, that's on me, honestly. Oh. Nah, that's fine. It turns out that red Pikmin don't like electricity. That's on me. I should have predicted that. Uh, <laughs> we're going to move the base now that, now that Pikmin have come in. Um, we're going to hopefully throw yellow Pikmin up here. Uh, okay, sir. Hopefully throw yellow. Yep. Okay, there we go. Excellent. I haven't seen that one either. Yeah, no. that's cool. Yeah, that, that, that's a new one. It's, it's slightly faster. Um, has a lot of advantages there. Uh, we're going to we're gonna make sure that they're uh, growing. we got to build the bridge because this is one of the caves where the exit is uh, different from the entrance. And if you want to actually go on this alternate exit, you have to, uh, instead of leaving early, you have to basically take the air vent up intentionally. So we have to build this clay mound. We get a cast away. And we are free to go. Excellent. So, Silas Patches is done. Oof, scary. All right, we have Francois. And we've got collected everything here. We just need to tie up a couple loose ends, and then we're ready to go to the next area. 
So yeah, no, it's 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 been pretty good so far. Do you have time for more donations? Yeah, we have to, donations would be good. Yeah, if we have time for some donations, it'd be great. Awesome, thank you so much. I have two hundred dollars from Barry Kramer. Every time I see Ochi, I point at my screen and say Ochi out loud. My casual <laughs> playthrough took a long time. <laughs> Incentive to Nicole's choice. Ochi. Ochi. Um, my choice, of course, is the Zerg campaign bonus mission. We are at ten thousand eight hundred thirty-three out of twenty thousand dollars. There's only nine thousand two hundred to go, and of course, if we get that nine thousand two hundred, that'll also put us at two hundred seventy thousand dollars raised. So, like, it's a win-win. Um, so, thank you so much for that donation. I also have $20 from Colin that says, hey, is that a treasure over there? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Thank you so much for your donation. Oh, God. <laughs> Colin, why? Everyone calling, everyone called Colin in the audience is going to be like, Ugh. oh, no. <laughs> All right, treasures are treasures are moving. One of this 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 ice pikmin is trying to grab onto this treasure so bad. Honestly, I can appreciate the effort. Uh, so hopefully, again, the sign of a good pikmin run. Hopefully, most of these things should be getting in at roughly the same time. Um, all right, music box. You, you can actually hear the music box as it's being carried. It's very sweet. Um, one, we're losing one Pikmin, unfortunately. No! Yeah, no. <laughs> no. It's saying, are you sure? And yeah. I have to be like, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it, it's, it's that ice Pikmin. I get to be kind of brutal because I play too much Pikmin. I'm like, if you really didn't want to be left behind, you should have just grabbed onto this treasure. <laughs> <laughs> you know. He's right, though. He's right. <laughs> he's, I'm, I'm kind of right. Uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes, in order to speedrun Pikmin, um, you, have to, you have to balance good maternal instinct with really, really, really strong apathy. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's really a, it's a constant battle of, of not only your, your mind, but also your soul. Uh, so luckily we are able to, interestingly, we are now able to upgrade Ochi some more, right? So pick, <laughs> Pikmin Dog. Uh, so there's a couple things that Ochi is good at that we want Ochi to be better at. Uh, one thing is Ochi can dig. We like that, but we need Ochi to dig faster. So we're going to quickly upgrade Ochi to digging faster. Before I traumatized chat and the audience by drowning Ochi so that he can swim, now we need to not traumatize Ochi but make him swim faster. You see, it's a little less painful this time. Upgrading Doggy Paddle allows him to swim faster and to do tasks like carry things and dig in the water. So this is very nice. We've amassed a decent number of materials. This is going to allow us to talk to Russ, and we are going to buy a couple things. The first thing to keep in mind is we're going to get a free ice bomb, um, or ice blast, I suppose, as it's called, and we're going to get a free bomb rock. We are then going to use our remaining materials to get five bomb rocks. Bomb rocks are... I mean, bombs. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't get too much more complicated than that. But they can be used not only to kill enemies, but also to down gates and do massive amounts of damage. And so you'll see the very interesting ways that we use items to help multitask and make things harder. Uh, if there is room for another donation, uh, the area loadings are always a little bit of a good place for those. Oh, perfect, because I have $50 from Xora that says, Dandori today, probably Dandori tomorrow. Dandori today. <laughs> Dandori. Amazing. Speaking of Dandori, we are inbound to Dandori Castle. Uh, so, so in order to get to Dandori Castle, I'm going to try to do a nice little trick jump uh, that requires me to shift Ochi's hitbox or some other, you know, somewhat magic thing with Rush. And we're going to try to save three seconds because it's a marathon and those three seconds are, mean everything to me. All right. Ochi, behave now. Nope. No. <laughs> no, this is a hard jump. Is all right, you know what? It's fine. It happens to the best of us. You can actually jump up there, but it's de as you can tell, it's actually deceptively hard. Ochi sometimes just does not want to get up there, and uh, no one knows why. Um, you know, sometimes this game is a riddle wrapped in a, an enigma. This is Dandori Castle. Uh, it's where um, Dandori Mar, as I like to call him, uh, challenges us to yet another fight. Luckily, we have a dingo. Let's go, dingo. Let's go, dingo. <laughs> dingo. Um, so, Mission Impossible 3, and Dingo's, done, and Dingo's done. That's that's pretty good. All right, now that we have uh, completed the Dandori battle, the last Dandori battle that we'll need to beat uh, to get the Leaflings at the very least, um, we can start moving and collecting the very valuable and very recognizable treasures above ground in Serene Shores. Uh, this is going to be why we... This is literally the only reason, but a very important reason, why we needed blues. Um... So we needed blues because everything's in water, basically, right? Look how much water there is. Everything is going to be need needed to be carried through water, and we're going to need to negotiate that. So having 
not only blues, but have them flowered is a very important part of to make this entire section work. Um, we're gonna. This is a bloister. If you throw them onto the tail, it just can't do anything. So that's very nice. Uh, we're gonna ignore this enemy because the power of ignorance uh, can sometimes be fast. And we're gonna knock this guy down. Uh, this is the Statue of Liberty. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the it's, small one from yeah, Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Uh, Hopefully not the real Statue of Liberty, unless something has gone horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. But, uh, are you gonna eat stuff? No! Ah. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Is it? it yeah, no, it, it, it builds character, don't worry. Okay. Uh, uh, it's, um, so we're gonna use these yellows. We only have four, but as I mentioned earlier, they are great diggers. So we're gonna use those to dig. Um, and we're gonna basically have Ochi dig a shell and carry it underwater. So that's why we needed to upgrade Ochi, is not only do we want Ochi to swim fast, but Ochi needs to be able to dig and carry stuff underwater. Uh, the shell, the statue, and the Statue of Liberty, there's another statue, you'll see it, don't worry, um, are very expensive. Uh, they are worth a lot, and therefore they are very prudent for us to collect. Um, so now we are just waiting for the Statue of Liberty to, to collect. Uh, where is it? Hold on, there it is. I'm looking for a small pixel to show that it collected. Uh, so here it is. We have all 32 of our Pikmin. Was there 33 earlier? Not if I close my eyes. Uh, <laughs> and, oh, nope, you're not going to grab them. Uh, so earlier, we very, very, very much earlier in the speedrun, we bound a whole bunch of stuff to shortcuts. Uh, this was to make our lives easier. We're actually going to review shortcuts right now because there's a couple new things I want to bind. Actually, pretty much one thing specifically. Uh, earlier, we got bomb rocks. I want to be able to use bomb rocks whenever I want. And now I can. Uh, so look, I just picked up a bomb rock. You see how much menuing that took? Not that much. Especially because I have six of them that I want to use over the course of the remaining run. This is why bomb rocks are good. This is a wall. And now it's gone. Uh, so normally that would take a lot of Pikmin, and, and now it took none. So that's very good. Uh, in terms of, so we only collected two Flarlicks, right? So we only originally could bring out 20 Pikmin. We can only have 40 Pikmin out onto the field. So the run is just very anemic in the sense that like, we don't actually have that many Pikmin that we can use. So being able to use Bomb Rocks in order to give us a little bit more leverage and, being a, uh, and give us basically the ability to complete tasks that would otherwise take a lot of Pikmin um, are part of what make this run work. Because you know, we have places to go and uh, things to do. Once these two things collect at the same time, because Dandori, we can leave. Dandori, and we're there. Yes, Dandori. Um, this next sub-level is one of the hardest sub-levels in the game. It has made grown men cry. It is me. I am the grown man who has <laughs> cried. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, this sub-level is rough, especially because I'm going to play it very risky, uh, because I don't have any self-control. Uh, so basically, Seafloor Resort has a lot of things to collect. Uh, first, we're going to destroy these jelly floats. Uh, Pi, do you want to explain what happens to frozen enemies in the air? So when, fro when enemies get frozen in midair, they will fall to the ground and uh, break instantly. And <laughs> that is a very quick way to dispose of flying enemies. Yep. You're going to want to remember that later, uh, everyone. Uh, we're going to basically try to have these blowhogs not bother us. It's so annoying. Yep, This don't is worry. like the most annoying part. Don't worry, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I said it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, it actually is Was fine now, fine? guys. Yeah, it's actually fine now. Don't worry, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> uh, I choose to ignore them because it's technically faster. It also can be very frustrating. Um, so now that we have Ochi that we left at spawn, look at that, right? That's Dandori. Um, we can then load this strawberry and head to the exit and everything will come in. This is one of the most gorgeous floors to play when it plays well. Look at this. They're all coming in at roughly the same time, which is how you know Dandori. Boom. There it is. Dandori. Oh, Excellent Dandori. Good floor. That was actually such a good floor. <laughs> I'm so happy with how that, how that went. That was gorgeous. Uh, so when, when everything in this, when Pikmin goes well, it actually just feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it honestly is what has kept me running all these years. Uh, so in typical Pikmin fashion, we want to get the farthest thing moving first. Uh, in this case, the farthest thing moving is a castaway um, over this graded spot of jelly float. Uh, earlier, you saw what happened to jelly floats when they get frozen, they instantly die. Now, normally this takes a lot of ice Pikmin, or it can take one well-placed ice blast. Goodbye. We're not even going to see it die, because we have other things to do in this floor. But don't worry, it did. We're going to check in on it in a little bit, just in case something went horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. But it didn't. 
Uh, we're gonna then kill this ice jelly. Yeah, it's great. Um, so now that this ice jelly is done, it's gonna lower the bars, which is going to allow us to actually grab this duck. Duck, duck, duck. Uh, we're gonna distract this guy, because this guy can be very annoying. Nope. No! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it makes you feel better, we kill that guy on purpose. It shouldn't make you feel better, but I just want to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, brutally, we basically didn't need him, and trust me, if that large aristocrab actually grabs a lot of Pikmin, you're in for a lot more trouble. Um, he so died this, for a greater cause. Yeah, truly, some, <laughs> truly the most noble of sacrifices. Uh, so this, this next sublevel used to be a huge reset point. It still can be. Uh, it, but it used to be a, a much worse reset point because um, Pikmin can get grabbed off of treasures. Luckily, I actually routed in an extra bomb uh, for this express purpose. Here is a wall, and the wall's gone. Bonk. So that wall is going to make the treasures route in a more favorable manner. Uh, I got to deal with this small crab with a well-placed rush. Bonk. Uh, I'm now gonna carry a, a large set of dentures. Uh, some, I love the treasures in this game. Uh, it's always very fun uh, seeing all the different kinds of treasures. Um, okay, sorry, there's a lot of Pikmin in bubbles. Can we, can we not have that? Yeah, thanks. Sorry. Uh, we, sometimes we just need a certain amount of treasures to, to carry, or sorry, amount of Pikmin to carry these treasures. So these treasures, instead of going a very dangerous way that is fraught with peril, uh, they're gonna go up here where I broke the wall. So that's... Oh, excuse me. What? Ah, oh, buddies. Sorry. So what happened here is... Uh, oh, the ice grabbed it? Yeah, so what happens here is if Ice Pikmin grab onto it, it won't go into the water because it's like Ice Pikmin can't go into water. So uh, this is a very uh, very common thing of the Pikmin being so smart. You see that crab over there? That crab can be very spooky. Yeah, Ice Pikmin can't go into water except for when they can. Except for when they can. Yeah, except no. when they <laughs> go yeah. running, yeah. The first rule of Ice Pikmin are there are no rules. They're, they're ice. <laughs> they're ice and they're Pikmin. Um, oh, so slopes in this game are sometimes very hard barriers, as you saw earlier, and sometimes there's suggestions. And there's literally no way of knowing in advance until you basically run Ochi into the slope a whole bunch of times. Okay, well, hold on. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. There it is. Ha ha. Yes. <laughs> Why can Ochi go up that slope and not other slopes? No one knows. Everyone, uh, how do you like boss quick kills? Uh, do you like boss quick kills? You! Do you like boss quick kills? All right, okay. <laughs> so in the middle of this floor, there is what's called the master hop. I love Master Hop. Look how big he is, right? Love that. Uh, it turns out that Master Hop likes jumping into the air, so we can actually abuse mechanics of frozen enemies to do something very, very cool. We will see how we do. So he wants to look at us, and we want to wait for him to look until right now, and he's gone. Click. Uh, <laughs> uh, down. Uh, we need to kill him to unlock this wall so that we can go free our last castaway which is our homie Yanni, the doctor. Did we get a spray from that? We did. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, so sprays are nice. Uh, so there we go. So we got, we, we got a spray. There's one Pikmin just really cannot grab onto this guy. Are you okay, dude? So that cutscene means that we got exactly 7,000 spark. You see that 7,000 of 7,000 in the upper right? That means that we did our job. And we, in and fact, we had Dandori. We had, we had good Dandori. We collected exactly what we needed to and exactly no more and, and exactly no less. This is Yanni. So we have, we're, as you can tell, if you look at the image, we are so close to rescuing everybody. We are just so close. Um, we just need to basically figure out where Bernard is. He's our last guy. It turns out that Bernard is one of the leaflings. Um, so in order to, bring, to get one of the leaflings, we're going to need to do some night missions. Well, a little bit more on that in a moment. But before we can even talk about night missions, we need to go tell Yanni that we've saved him. So that's going to require ending the day. So while we end the day, this would be a great time for donations. Absolutely. I have a $5 donation from Emily that says, I'm seven years old and my dad won't let us have a dog, so Pikmin 4 is one of my favorite games because I get a dog. I love you, Ochi. That's incredibly cute. Thank you so much for your donation. I have $25 from Louis IRL. Give Couch Ochi, Kochi, a cuddle for me. Couch Ochi. Can we get, can, yeah, can we just show Couch Ochi over here? Yeah, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Kochi. Oh. Oh. No! no! <laughs> this happens. What are you doing? He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Oh He's gosh. okay. He's okay. All right. Pikmin pick, pick, dog. Pikmin dog. That was Pikmin really dog. upsetting for him. That was very... Honestly, it's okay. I'm, 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 He's I'm, fine. Oh, God. I know I'm upset. Oh, Don't worry about it. <laughs> Be careful with the Ochi. Pikmin dog. 
So 7,000 exactly, org. with the shear gaps from the first cave yeah. as well? Yeah, you, you, we, we, we routed it out exactly. Yeah, if you don't get that one, <laughs> that one spark from the shear gaps early, you'll be at 6,999. Which is fun. I mean, there's obviously spark backups, but yeah. like you know, but there's it's it's it is fun how like how it turns out that if you just get this one bug, it routes very easily. So it turns out that in order to rescue leaflings, we have to go and like go to the previous areas that we were at night. Um, so night missions are a new thing that was introduced in Pikmin 4. The basic idea of the night missions is that you go into an area with super aggressive bugs at night because normally you um, leave for sunset because the bugs get too aggressive. Now we're going to go into these areas with the aggressive bugs, and we basically need to defend these. It's like a tower defense, but with Pikmin. At the very least, this would all be very interesting if we actually did any of this, but we're not doing any of this. Why? Because Dingo rocks. Um, it turns out that Dingo can just do all of this for us. Unfortunately, it really doesn't want Dingo to do this for us, so in order to tell Dingo to do it, we first have to restart the level and then we have to explicitly um, kind of die, which is morbid, but true. So the four bomb rocks exist explicitly to make this a reality. This part is going to make everyone cry. I am so sorry. I can't believe this. I know. Um, <laughs> look away. Look away. It's okay. okay. I'm not watching. Yeah. And you can see Cap is throwing the Pikmin away from the bombs so we don't get the extinction. Yeah, cutscene. exactly. We have to throw the Pikmin away from the bombs. Ochi, come on. All right. So you know you timed this well. <laughs> I know, I know, I know it's sad. You, you know, I know what you're thinking, why can't you just have Dingo do it like before? It turns out that Dingo doesn't actually help unless you deplete all of your HP and all of Ochi's HP. I wish there was a better way of doing this. It's not even that, you know. It turns out that in the first level, there's no quick way to die, so we actually explicitly buy four bomb rocks because it is faster. It's pretty brutal. Um, um, but we're going to have to do this for three night missions because there's three leaflings, right? We did three Dandori battles, <laughs> three Mission Impossible, three leaflings. And it turns out that the last leafling is what we need to, uh, to move on to the next area. Um, so, yeah, so this is the leafling. Uh, so while we prepare for the next uh, Dendori battle, uh, sorry, sorry, not Dendori real, the next night mission, um, maybe is there another donation that, that has come in while we oh, wax poetic? Oh, yeah. more than you could possibly imagine. Yeah. I have $100 from the Sneaky Spy. I can't overstate how much the Pikmin community means to me and how happy I am to see it at GDQ yet again. Watching this new release brings the community together was an experience I'll treasure forever. Special shout-outs to Cap. Let's not only rescue Olimar, but prevent cancer too. Thank you so much for your donation. Sneaky Spy is one of the greatest people to ever do it. Aww. If, there, if, if there's another donation, <laughs> it's, it's fine to read. It might distract the, the audience from what's about okay, to happen. Okay, audience, don't watch. <laughs> well, watch, but pretend you're not seeing what you're about to say. <laughs> I have $25 from Lexi who says, donating because who doesn't love Ochi, the lovable pig dog who's stolen all of our hearts. Thank you for your donation. He's definitely not about to die. I have $50 <laughs> from Kaden who says, Dandori is forever. Thank you so much for your donation. Chat, don't look. Audience, look away. $50 from Single Speed. I tried to send a donation, but I also crash landed. Hope my wallet Dandori is strong enough. Thank you for your donation. I have $10 from Kiros. Here's Good a 10 pellet to help get more Pikmin for this run. Thank you so much for your donation. We told you not to look. What, <laughs> what did we say? What did we tell you? This is your fault. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have $25 from Dash near This donation demonstrates excellent Dandori. Thank you for your donation. $20 from Dandori that says Dandori. Thanks for that, Dandori. 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 <laughs> 20, oh, my gosh. $25 from Lemon Carrots, a donation in honor of my favorite Pikmin, Rock Pikmin. Thank you so much for your donation, Rock Pikmin. But I also have a $25 donation from Gorilla's Brevity that says, undisputable fact, purple Pikmin are the best Pikmin, perfect yeah, they chomps. They, so are. Like, they are. They are. They're, they're, what they're is true? Goated. Who knows? They're, they're pretty goaded. <laughs> Uh, so, thank you so much. Uh, I just want to talk about a, a couple more stuff coming up. So, uh, we have only one more night mission. Don't worry, the nightmare is almost over, uh, literally, because it's night. Uh, but there's a couple things coming up that I kind of want to preface, because there's going to be a lot to explain uh, in, in a little bit. So, the next, um, the next night expedition, normally we've gotten basically one cure per mission. This next mission is actually going to give us two cures, which is why we're picking it in particular. Um, this is going to be able to cure not only the last leafling that we have right now, but eventually Olimar. Spoiler alert, we do cure Olimar and rescue him. If you didn't know that, I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I apologize. Uh, another thing that's going to come up is safe code. Uh, uh, Pi, do you want to just kind of explain how the safe code works? Oh, yeah. So when yeah. you start the game, there's a code that is randomly generated, and it can be 
uh, a three-digit code. Yes. Um, yeah. So basically, yeah, are... it's it's a it's a three-digit <coughs> code, and there's a couple rules. Uh, the rules are there are there can be no zero, so it's one through nine, and there can be no repeat digits. So there is strictly speaking uh, nine times eight times seven combinations, which is a large number. What there's a difference between what you're supposed to do and what you a and what we do in the speed run. Oh yeah, I know this again. It's it's this is painful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I know. I I I. I... <laughs> Ochi. You can do it, Ochi. You can do it. <laughs> no! <laughs> Ochi falls. Uh, that enemy can actually be very finicky, so the fact that it didn't decide to go for a random walk is, was very nice. It can decide to occasionally just, you know, just not behave. Uh, so I would say this was a very well-behaved night mission section. Mm -hmm. Don't Nightmare's worry. over. Nightmare's over, by Nightmare's the way. Over. Ochi lives. To see for now. Thing. For now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dandori. Um, Pikmin dog. So normally what you're supposed to do in this run is you're normally supposed to go to the next area. You're supposed to explore the next area. You're supposed to collect all of the numbers in the form of playing cards, and you're supposed to use those numbers in order to suss out the safe code to find Olimar. That sounds like it's going to take a very long time, <laughs> which is the only problem. So that's going to take a very long time, and we might not want to do that. By the way, we've rescued the Rescue Corps. Yes. <laughs> yes. We did it. Um, so now that we've rescued the Rescue Corps, we can actually go on and rescue Olimar. Bernard gives us the coordinates, and we need 7,000 spark to unlock the, f the area where Olimar is. You're not going to believe how much spark we have. 7,000 spark. Oh, well. What? Who planned this? <laughs> Was it us? It's almost like there's an entire community effort coming it's together to route an amazing game like Pikmin 4. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. No, this, this, this took a lot of effort, but it is fun to see how it all comes together. Uh, so this is the fun part, is normally you explore and get all of the safe code numbers. We aren't going to do that, because that sounds very long. Uh, so we're going to do the fastest thing we could possibly think up, which is to guess. Uh, we are going to guess <laughs> sequentially every single possible code option that we can get our hands on. It, this is the, this, it's just so fun. Uh, the good news is we are going to get one number because it's so close. And so that is going to lead, instead of having 700 different possible codes, it's going to be narrowed down to 56. You know, I find that a lot more, a lot more acceptable. So we're going to get this playing card. Uh, I'll be able to see it in a cutscene in a little bit. Moss is out here currently defending her honor and Olimar's honor. Uh, and Moss is normally a, a very big pain. Uh, we're just going to ignore her. Look. Hi, Moss. Bye, Moss. Yeah, hi. You know, she, we have things to do. Uh, so nine. Everyone pay attention to that nine. That's a nine. Uh, nine, yeah. Nine. Uh, yes, nine. <laughs> Excellent. We, we figured that out. So now we're just going to do this. This is amazing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Riveting gameplay. <laughs> this is the greatest part of the run, and it's not actually close. All right, we're we're up to three. It's okay. It can't be nine. Is not we? Is nine is already spoken for? Fours? Are we gonna get lucky on fours? Eight, seven, nine. Yeah. Quick update while we're trying to hack yes. into this. All right. yeah. We are at $12,160 out of $20,000 for the Zerg campaign bonus mission, so we are only $7,840 uh -huh. away. So let's go ahead and get those donations in. Make sure when you donate to select that as the incentive if you would like to see that. Please. Is it an, is it an eight code? It, oh, no. you, I think you missed something. You missed seven. the sevens. Ah. Uh, GDQ Classic. All right. Sevens, please be. If it isn't on seven, then we have other problems. Yeah. That, oh, no. <laughs> oh, of course. One of the worst ones. Seven eight, nine, seven, eight, nine is one of the worst possible codes you can get. The single worst possible code is eight, seven, nine. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> that was pretty bad. <laughs> All right. So, Leafy Showdown. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where's Dingo? The answer is Dingo actually can't help us. Dingo's hands are tied. So, we actually have to beat Olimar in hand to hand combat. Uh, so while we do this, uh, this is unfortunately an unskillable part of the run, and we are just going to have to beat him, and I don't know, it's going to be close. We're going to see how close it is. So there's, <laughs> there's going to be so there's something called a platinum medal. If you want a platinum medal, you have to beat Olimar by 100 points. I'm going to go for triple platinum. If we can beat him by 300 points, I'll consider that a good day. 
Um, so we're going to try to see if we can just cook this dude alive. Uh, in the meantime, if there's donations, that would be swell. There because we sure gotta... are. Yep. I have Thank $25 you. from Slim Kirby. Hello, everybody. Happy to be live in the crowd for this run. This was my favorite game that came out last year, and it's fun watching Cap destroy it with such skill. Thanks oh, to everyone you. involved with AGDQ, and let your Dandori shine brilliantly. Also, Ochi, one of the best doggos ever. Who agrees with me? Thank you so Woo! much. Ochi, people <laughs> agree with you. I have $5 from Ben that says Dandori. $5 trains are very efficient. Thank you so much for your donation. $10 from Nuclear that says, Hi, Nicole, it's me, Shiv. Hope you're having fun at GDQ. Also, hi, runners and chat. Love your work. Hope you win. Pippin noises. Thank you so much for your donation. I have $5 from Michael, $5 Brood War Train, of course, referencing that upcoming run. And we are at $12,285 for that out of $20,000 for the incentive relating to that. I have $150 from Anonymous. It says, Ochi, I love seeing him on my screen. Same. It was real good, except for when he dies. Yeah. We don't talk about that. <laughs> I don't know Three what you're talking times. about. <laughs> I have $25 from Justin that says if they make a spinoff with giant plant creatures, would they call it Pick Max? How dare you? Thank you. I have $25 from Mudkip and Sunglasses, donating for my mom who survived cancer last year. Love watching a Pikmin speedrun for a good cause. Can I get an Ochi from the crowd? Ochi. Ochi. Yeah, woo. I have $50 from Young Nanner that says this. This is true Dandori. Thank you for your donation. $50 from Holly. Such Dandori. Yeah. Thank you for your donation. Thank you so much. It is, it truly is so fun. Oh, hello. You're doing, it truly really is so fun um, seeing uh, all of the people celebrate, you know, Pikmin and, and come together. You know, I think it's a really fun game. I want to take this moment because it's prudent to, to shout out some people because there's some time. I, I first want to shout out um, the Pikmin community at large. Uh, I, I can't say, I've been part of the community for seven years, and I've been so proud of how far we've come as a community. Are we going to grab this, by the way? Ah, oh. uh, that would have been fun. Uh, I, but no, but I'm so proud of how far the community has come in, in routing and doing various, uh, you know, and coming together and having a lot of fun and talking about our favorite games. And I feel like um, I, I'm so proud to have such a group have such a po positive impact on, on my life and on many other people's lives and having fun bonding over our favorite games. So Maybe you could uh, mention how other people could get into Pikmin Speedruns. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I would love to. So the, the, the best thing you can do uh, if you want to get into Pikmin Speedrunning is uh, predictably joining the Pikmin Speedrunning Discord. Uh, we're very friendly. We will uh, happily teach you like all of the fun stuff about runs. Uh, you can figure out who's streaming, you know, what, what people to do, what runs to pick up. We're happy to give you tips, and we're happy to get everyone involved. You can find the Discord on speedrun.com and any of the Pikmin pages. Yeah, and on my Twitch pro profile, and, you know, I, I you know, it, it, we paste it in a lot of places, but, you know, or you can come up to me at this event, and that's where it is, you know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll be happy to tell you. Um, Olimar is trying to collect things, and a lot of a lot of the technique in this, if you want to do really well in Dandori battles, uh, a very good technique is, um, to prevent Olimar from collecting stuff, because it turns out that if he isn't collecting stuff, uh, he can't, you know, he, uh, he he can't get points. So this is a very good way. If you're having a hard time ever beating Olimar, uh, don't worry, I won't judge you. But the best way of doing it is to prevent him from collecting stuff, and then over over time, you'll just amass the greater amount of points. Um, Olimar is in my base. What are you doing, dude? Uh, it's okay. Uh, but. You know, so there's a lot of other stuff. If there's some more donations, this is a great time for donations. Absolutely. I have $25 from Lou that says $25 for 25 little Pikmin doing their best. Let's keep the momentum going just like them and keep working hard to help prevent cancer. Thank you so much for your donation. I have $50 from Axroy that says your Dandori is impressive. Let's go Pikmin. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I have $25 from Aspion that says this too is Dandori. Thank you for your donation. I have $25 from Sarah Caesar that says, don't forget to choose an incentive when you donate for more GDQ. Also, Ochi is best puppy, less than three. Thank you so much. I agree. We won't talk about earlier. I have $10 from JPEG that says, there are so many good dogs in this marathon. We love you, Ochi. Get Thank up. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Thank you so much for your <laughs> Scary sound. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. So the, I, I, I should explain this warning. So this is the sneak bomb. Uh, if, if, if someone collects it and returns it to the opponent's base, they lose a lot of points. Uh, this is pretty bad. Not really for us because we lose, like, items or, like, points. We don't really mind points. Olimar cannot beat us. Uh, there's a fun story. People have lost to Olimar before. Don't ask how. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 uh, but I was going to say, um, you don't. what you don't want to have happen is you don't want... Um, 
Oh no, sorry, one minute. We have to attack Moss. You don't want it to collect because it's a cutscene and cutscenes are slow. This is... Um, okay, so Ochi... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> not, a, not a GDQ, come on now. Ochi, Ochi, come on. Okay, it's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna prevent this guy from. <laughs> oh no! And I opened the map. <laughs> no. Hey, Colin's gonna bother us now because we opened the map. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. Well, we're not gonna get we're not gonna get triple platinum on Oshi. That's. <laughs> Uh, or sorry, on, on, on Olimar. That's not going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, luckily, Olimar does not have the AI to learn that I lost all these points and that he could collect them, so I'm just going to collect them again. Um, this is this has actually gotten very close. <laughs> because because it's at GDQ, uh, and that's why we love GDQ, because only at GDQ could this happen to me. Um, but yeah, so not only... So I, I should probably explain the map. So in, in Pikmin, there's this map, and you see how that UI of opening the map took a very long time? Uh, so basically, you don't want to ever touch that button in the entirety of the speedrun. It's just a button that is just unavailable to us uh, for all intents and purposes. Um, Chris, you know, you actually came up with a little optimization coming up on collecting Olimar. You want to kind of... Wait, I did? Yeah. Did, 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 <laughs> oh, you're using my routes? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I had it, it no was, idea. It was bad. Yeah, so before Cap entered this level, he picked up an extra bomb rock on the way. Is that That's the one yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. 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 So instead of going back to the base where we came from, he's unlocking a different base with the bomb we collected. Uh, yeah. And that should carry Olimar back t uh, to the base a little faster. Right, How much yeah. time does it save? Uh, it saves like 10, 15 seconds. Like Ooh. Oh, yeah. we didn't get it. The Chrism time save. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah, so, so we won, by the way. Um, nice. <laughs> so Olimar is defeated. We won. Uh, I, I, I'm happy I was able to make it close for everybody. Uh, I, I consider only winning by 100 pretty close. Um, <laughs> so we, now we've rescued Olimar, and so now we basically just need to get him back to... We needed to get him back to the base uh, and so we can end the day and we can actually collect him and, and cure him with our remaining cure. We actually have a cure lined up for him. So that is going to be what we do here. Uh, we have a spicy as well, which is very nice. Um, you can actually prevent the spicy cutscene from playing by jumping after you use it. So that's very fun. Um, so we're gonna use the, then there's a bomb, ah, uh, well, oh no, uh, sorry. Oh, I missed the bomb. Yeah, no. that's okay, it's okay, this happens. Are you gonna stop? No way. Okay, it, it doesn't want to stop, I'm gonna do this, yeah, you just gotta eat stuff, it's, thank you. All right, All right. and the base. Chaos, chaos at the end, chaos at the end, it's okay. Sometimes there's always a little bit of chaos. So now I got it, so there's Olimar somewhere. There should be Olimar somewhere. somewhere. Olimar, there he is. Hey, there he is. So now we can carry him back to the base, and in theory, this was faster. <laughs> 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 oh, man. As, as usual, um, chaos at the very end. I should, uh, so normally you're supposed to throw the bomb before you, Spicy. But, you know, I, what, what can I say? Uh, Dandorimar really, really shook me from that riveting battle. So now we, we, we collect Olimar. We, we, don't know who, we don't know he's Olimar yet. Sorry, this is still supposed to be, for some reason, a secret. Uh, so we're going to end the day, uh, and now we're going to heal Olimar. And just for reference, crew, time is coming in about 35 seconds. So get ready for that. I will let you know. Um, but basically what's going to happen is we're going to go back. We're going to say we collected Olimar. We collected apparently a playing card for some reason. Uh, <laughs> you know, but that's the only other thing we collected actually on this day. It's really funny. So we, 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 we collected Olimar. Great job. Uh, we collected a playing card. Great job for us. Nine. <laughs> the, the, the famous nine. <laughs> nine. Uh, and that, and that was a, a, a very successful day in my opinion. And now we're going to have Yanni with our remaining cure, cure Olimar instantly. And we have uh, time once clear appears on the item. So it's time. Woo! Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's the rescue Olimar. What's what was time? Oh, one eighteen ten. Honestly, yeah. could have been worse. <laughs> what, what, what's your PB? Uh, PB is one fifteen. So consider, but you know, considering considering it got a little bit scary at the very end there, I'm I'm gonna call that very acceptable. Beat my PB by ten minutes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, so it's, our PBs by infinite. Yeah, there you go. No, so um, 
but yeah, so I mean, I, I'd already give a large shout out, but basically, you know, I'm, I'm so thank you, uh, AGDQ, for, for inviting me out. Uh, I'm always happy to show, uh, along with all of my comrades in the Pikmin speedrunning community, I'm always happy to show the crazy stuff you can do with these gorgeous little guys in this game. Um, it really, it really warms my heart, uh, and so I appreciate everyone for supporting me, getting me out here, uh, and, and overall, I hope to see. Uh, I'm glad to show this, and hopefully, more uh, Pikmin movement across all. Uh, five Pikmin games uh, at maybe AGDQs in the future. Here's something. Yeah. Cap so, Cap is always super you actually helpful. actually acknowledged Hey Pikmin? So make sure you check out his Twitch. <laughs> he, streams, he streams Pikmin all the time and he's super helpful whenever yeah. you have any questions. Yeah, yeah one, two, three, 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 three deluxe, and four. Yeah, thank you. Thank um, you, Chris. True, true, true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but pretty much all. You know, over, over the course of the last years, all um, all four console Pikmin games, uh, Pikmin 1, 2, 3, and 4 respectively, have all seen major activity at all times. So there's never a bad Pikmin game to get into. There's never a bad time to get into them. Actually, the best time to get into them was yesterday. The next best time is tomorrow. Don't get into them today. You should be watching me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so, but, you know, so if, if, if you want to learn, now, now, is, now is the time. If you're thinking about learning, don't think, do. Dandori. And one thing I would like to say is that like every Pikmin game is also like a very very different speedrun as yeah, well. Yeah, they're, so, like, they're all very. You different. can try them all out and see which one you sort of vibe with the best. Yeah, I, I think that's very cool. Is that there's all there's similar concepts, but they really execute very differently. But yeah, no, it's it's been awesome. Any case, uh, they, again, just thank you so much. You we can enjoy uh, the, these nice credits, and then we can move on to to the to next programming as needed. Yeah. Great run cap. Yeah, thank you very much. Dandori. 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 Pikmin dog. Pikmin, Pikmin dog. dog. Pikmin dog. Pikmin dog. Very good dog. Thank you so much Pikmin for that dog. run. It yeah, was absolutely.